Hey, it's me again, Alex Frankor, head of product at Zeta. Over the past year, we've been open sourcing different parts of our architecture as standalone tools for the Postgres community. We first introduced PG Roll, a command line tool for zero downtime reversible schema migrations. Next was PGZX, a library for develop extensions written in Zig. And today, we're excited to announce and introduce PG Stream, a command line tool and library for Postgres change data capture. In this demo, our lead engineer, Esther, will walk us through PG Stream and why it's different than existing CDC solutions out there. She'll dive into an example output to open search that keeps the data in sync with any DDL changes seen from Postgres. And while PG Stream is a turnkey solution, it also has a modular architecture. Esther will demonstrate how Kafka can be added in the middle for additional scale. We're excited to add PG Stream to the family and welcome any external contributions from the community. Take it away, Esther. Hi, uh, my name is Esther and I'm a backend engineer at Zeta. And today I'm gonna do a quick demo on how to use PG Stream, our latest open source tool. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, PG Stream is a change data capture tool that provides Postgres replication support with schema changes. Uh, you can visit the project readme for a full description on how to use it and uh, an architecture overview. So for the demo, I will be showing how to use PG Stream to replicate Postgres data and schema changes to open search. I will start uh, Postgres open search and uh, open search dashboards by using the Docker Compose uh, file that is available in the GitHub repo. Um, it will start other resources, but that we will not need immediately, but it's just for simplicity. The next thing I will do is install uh, uh, PG Stream. You can install it by using the Go command tool, or you can use Docker or Homebrew if you're on a Linux-based system. Um, so now that the now that the Postgres uh, resource has initialized, I can just go check quickly. There's nothing in there, and um, there's no replication slot. Uh, next thing will be to uh, run uh, the PG stream init command, which will initialize the, uh, the PG stream resources in the database that we have uh, associated. In this case, what I'll do is it will create a, a dedicated PG stream uh, replication slot as well as a PG stream uh, schema where there will be the tables that will keep track of the schema changes internally. So if we do a quick select on On the schema log table, we can see that there's nothing uh, generated yet. So I'll show quickly that on uh, the open source side of things, we also have a clean slate. There are no indices beyond what's available by default. And I will now run my uh, PG stream command. This uh, uses a PG2OS environment file, which uh, contains all of the environment variables related to uh, initializing the Postgres to open search uh, modules. Now there's more information about this in the readme under the configuration section, but this is already available uh, from the PG stream repo. So now that it is created, uh, it has started, I am going to create a table uh, where I will, I will ingest a uh, later uh, data set. And in this case, it's gonna be Netflix titles. So I've created the table now. And if we look at the schema log that we checked before, it has now one, one row that keeps track of the schema view containing the newly created table for the Netflix titles. And similarly, this uh, schema uh, change would have been replicated downstream uh, onto open search and into the PG stream index, which has now been created. So if we retrieve the PG stream index content, we'll see that there's also just a single entry which matches 
the page stream view uh, of the uh, schema in Postgres. Now, the other index that was created on OpenSearch was the public index. This uh, matches the schema name in Postgres that we have been using in this case, because I didn't explicitly create a, a schema, it will use public. And if we check the public mapping, we can see that it has been updated to contain uh, all of the fields that currently uh, exist in the Netflix titles table in Postgres. One thing to note is that uh, instead of using the table uh, column names that we see in Postgres, this uses a PG stream ID, which uh, is immutable. And in the case of open search means we don't need to be, we don't need to do reindexing every time that there's a rename on the on the table. Okay. So now that we have seen that how the schema changes has replicated, let's just uh, ingest data to see that that also makes it into open search. Uh, so 8,807 uh, rows has been in, have been injected. And if I now do a search on the public index, we should see that we have 8,807 records available. And that's uh, our data populated from Postgres to OpenSearch. Now, if we wanted to go further, we could also demo the same uh, the same uh, ingestion pipeline. But instead of using Postgres to OpenSearch, we could use uh, Postgres uh, to Kafka and Kafka to OpenSearch. So the idea. The idea will be that uh, we add a buffering in between both services, which allows us to uh, to deploy PG stream in more uh, complex uh, use cases. So if I go to PG stream and I run Kafka to OS, this will be a separate service. It will try to connect to the consumer for the topic that I have created a, a, a above. And I will be truncating the table mostly so that we don't As you can see, uh, when we check now the, our public index, we can see that there are no, no items returned after the truncate. And I will do the same copy that I did before. And if we now go and search again, we will see 8,807 again. The mapping hasn't changed in this case since it's the same table, but the data has been replicated in this case through Kafka.